Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to develop shear, moment, and axial diagrams for a frame that includes an inclined member. We're going to look at this particular frame for which we have already provided you the reactions. One thing don't be alarmed about is that the vertical reaction here at A is indeed zero, and statics would reveal that to you. We also want to point out that this member is inclined at 45 degrees. It'll be helpful for some future calculations to also have this length here, which is 14.14 feet, which, by the way, was computed by simply using Pythagorean's theorem, where you had 10 feet squared, add that up, and it was equal to 14.14 feet. The real key to developing shear and moment diagrams for frames is that you need to break the frame apart into individual members and sketch complete, and I stress that word complete, complete free body diagrams for the individual members. And so that's what we have done here. I'm going to go ahead and transfer my known length here, 14.14 feet. And once we have break these apart, we will get the complete free body diagrams, but remember that what we want to do is resolve all your forces into parallel and perpendicular components. Okay, so first place that's going to affect us is if we look down at the support at A. We have 30 kips acting horizontal. We need to resolve that into its components, so it'll have a component this direction and a component this direction. Now this is kind of convenient because of that zero kips vertical, but if you had something there as well, you'd also have to include that as you are resolving this into its components. Now both of these quantities are going to be 21.21 kips. And where that was reobtained, let me just show you the cosine 45 degrees times 30 kips is equal to 21.21 kips. So with that in hand, we can go ahead, and I told you we had to be complete, so we need to know what the shear, moment, and axial is at the end. Quick summation of forces along that diagonal there would tell us that the axial is 21.21 kips. Then you run some of your other equilibrium equations, and we would get that the shear, so I, notice I've sketched a positive shear arrow, we would compute out that the shear here is negative 21.21 kips, and the moment is actually equal to zero kip feet. Now you would run equilibrium on that, and when you run the equilibrium, only do it on this segment. Okay, now we need to do it for the horizontal member, and if we solve for the shear, we would find the shear on this one is equal to negative 30 kips we would find that the moment is equal to zero, and actually we'd find the axial is equal to zero. So once you get these complete free body diagrams, everything is going to be based on that. So we're going to handle first the axial diagram, which will require us just simply to look at axial forces on this free body. You will notice that there's no applied load in the axial direction, just the forces at the end. And so we will plot that. This is going to be axial. We're going to use units of kips. It's tension, 21.21 at this end. And at B, 21.21. Since there's nothing on that free body diagram in the axial direction to change it, we know that that's going to be constant. Now for member B, C, D, we look at our free body diagram and we notice that that is zero at this end, zero at this end, nothing on that member in the axial direction, so that works out to be zero. As we move on to the shear diagram, let's look at member A, B, and looking at the shears at each end, remember a positive shear causes a clockwise rotation of the member, so at the far left end, it is a positive shear of 21.2. 21 kips. So on this we want to provide that that's a shear diagram and we will be working in units of kips. If you look at the other far end, 
that produces a negative 21.21 kims. And then we go back, working from left to right, the change in shear from one location to another is the area under the load diagram. So if you were to take this, take 3 kips per linear foot, multiply it by 14.14, you would get a negative 42.42 kips. That's the area under the load diagram. Why the negative? Because the arrows are pointed in the downward direction. So what we know is that going from point A to B, there is a change, a negative change, equal to 42.42, which brings me back down to here, which is what I knew. Since load was constant, shear then is going to be first order. Because of symmetry, it becomes very easy for me to tell this distance out is 7.07 .07 feet. And so I can calculate the areas under the shear diagrams. This will work out to be 75 kip feet. This will work out to be negative 75 kip feet. Now let's get the shear diagram for member BCD. Let's look back at our free body diagram. So shear is a negative 30 kips on the left end. It is a positive 30 kips on the right end. So we'll get those plotted. So negative 30, positive 30. Looking back at the load diagram, going from point B to C, there is no load, so there is no area, meaning there is no change in shear from point B to C. So we stay at negative 30, but we do encounter a point load. That point load is 60 kips, and so I have a total of 60 kip jump there, which will bring me up to positive 30. And then from point C to D, if you look back on the load diagram, there is no load, so no change in shear. Since there is no load, the shear is constant in those regions. You can go ahead and shade those in, and I'll provide you with the areas for that. Negative 180. The area here is a positive 180. And we will use that to be able to get our moment diagrams. So our moment diagram, moment, we'll use units of kips and feet. Let's go ahead and handle member AB first. But we want to recognize, if we look back at the shear diagram, we had that point of zero shear that occurred at mid-distance. So looking back at our load diagram, please note that there is not a moment arrow there, and there's not a moment arrow there, which means that the moments are zero at both ends, and that will then allow me to plot my known values of moment there. Now let's go back to the far left, working from left to right change in moment from one location to the next, so from point A to the mid-span, we'll have a change in moment of positive 75, so it goes from 0 up to 75. Then from the mid-span down to point B has a change in moment of negative 75, which brings me back down to 0, which is what I knew, meaning I feel comfortable now in the calculations I did. Let's go ahead and connect the dots here. Since this shear is a first-order curve, the moment it will be a second order curve. Those will connect like this with a second order line. And we need to make sure we understand why the curve goes that way instead of going like this. So let's come back here to the shear diagram. And a positive value of shear means a positive slope. A zero value of shear means a zero slope and a negative value of shear at the far right means a negative slope. And so looking at the slopes, we know that that's the way it would have to connect. Let's finish out this example by getting the moment diagram for member BC. We'll need this information here, as well as noting that I have a zero moment on the left, no moment arrow on the right. So let's go ahead and get those plotted in. Zero moment there, zero moment there. Now, the change in moment from point B to C is the area under the shear diagram. So it goes from 0 down to negative 180. It's going to be a first order curve because of a constant shear. Now, going from point C to D, it will jump by 180, which brings me back to 0. And that's a good thing because that's the value I thought it should have been. And that will connect with a first order curve because shear was constant in that region. 
I'm just going to go ahead and label these as first order curves. And that concludes this example. Remember that it is always a beautiful day for studying structures.